Hey guys, um, I finished this a while ago. I thought I'd finally go and show you. Uh, it's a minecart counter, basically. Um, yeah, so it's this massive thing just to count the minecarts that go into this. So it's a little bit overkill, but uh, whatever. Uh, so this would be like at a station that I would be dispensing them at, like you've seen at my other videos. And a problem that I had was uh, one of the stations, the way it's wired, is if I hit the button to get a cart, but then no cart comes through, then I have to go in and manually reset everything because it needs the cart to reset itself. But, yeah, so it was just kind of a pain, and I wanted to be able to fix that. And instead of trying to figure out a simpler way to do it, I just wanted to play around with... Uh, the one bit adders and put those together because I did it at school so anyway so the way this works is this would be the dispenser at the station uh, the station back here would be right behind it too and as you can see it is what controls how fast the carts are pushed out so it even though they can all come into this really quickly they slowly come out of here because the computer does take a little bit of time to add so or subtract so you have to give it the time to think about it and process the information so that's why I had to do that but then back here this is what would be at the like central like station this would be like the headquarters or whatever and then I'd have individual ones of these at each station so basically whenever the station needs more carts it would tell this main station that it needs more or if the station is full then it'll send the excess carts down here and back to the main station so pretty simple uh, this other sensor here that's what subtracts it so whenever a cart leaves then it counts it uh, this is like my main place here that it has all the buttons and switches and whatnot but here, I'll show you it working, and then just to get an idea of it. So you subtract the cart, one leaves, goes back to the main station. Then the binary, you see it changes first, because it's quicker. And then the screen is programmed off of the binary code, so it has to wait for it first. That's why it takes a little bit longer. So now you can see it says that there's four carts in there, and there are four carts. Uh, now one thing that I went ahead and did was uh, made automated filling. So once the station gets down to three carts or less, then it automatically tells the main station to fill it. So it sends five more carts from the main station. Now right now I have this off, just so you can see what I did. but can tell none of these are lit up here but then if I subtract a cart then it'll be down to three carts and it will want to add to it so it takes a little bit of time to ask to confirm that it is indeed at three carts uh, now you can see that it's flashing because it's telling you that it's almost empty and it's beeping at you so, you can go over here, you can flip that, and then now it'll tell you that it's auto-filling, and then it sends five carts to go ahead and add in there. Now, while that's doing that, uh, I'll show you this. Um, it's relatively simple, that it's kind of like a racetrack that goes around. This is all the computer part of it that actually does the stuff. You can see this is a 5-bit adder and subtractor. And then there's just the memory. That's all you need to do for it. But then I added the graphics part just because I wanted to have a nice display. So, uh, yeah. So now each one of these cells is an individual adder um, thing. It's it's just a one bit adder. You can find like blueprints for it because I made one at school on a breadboard. I thought that it was pretty cool, so I wanted to try it out here, and it turned out that it worked, so uh, it was nice. And then you can get like compact uh, adders, and there it's just for convenience, really. 
instead of having everything stretched out. But yeah, so it's pretty simple. This is just what controls the adding and subtracting. Uh, it's just one A and B inputs. And then you also have the carried in value, and then you have the sum. And over here you have the carried out value, but since I'm not recording that because I don't I didn't want to have to add in something else into the memory that I didn't need. Because even though it's five bits, I I only go up to sixteen, so really I could have stopped at 15 and then said once it's over it then it would be full but oh well I didn't feel like doing that um, so here is the number after the RAM like or before the RAM because this is where the memory starts and it's after the adder subtractor so this is the binary representation which is 8 which as you can see is 8 but then by default it goes in and is added so, 8 plus 1 is 9, So, which that is in binary. It's kind of flipped because the way I have it set through there. But then this is the value that will be flashed to the RAM if you just go ahead and add it. If you subtract it, then some other stuff has to switch around. But basically it just stores that number, and then... Once you say to add it, then it goes ahead and it erases that memory, but then flashes this through before the computer has a time to get it through. So then it comes through there, is stored in the new memory cells, and then comes out and then waits. And it's processed. Uh, as you can see, this one comes out the fifth bit, because 15 is 1000 zero or something like that. Anyways, yeah, so that's the only one that the fifth bit is lit up. So then that goes through, and it goes underground here and around up to this track switch. So once that one's lit up, then this will go ahead and switch over. So, yeah, it's uh just keeps the station from overfilling. It's a handy little thing. Um, now you can probably find this on YouTube somewhere, but this is the my GPU, or it's just a binary decoder. Uh, I probably made it way too complicated than it really needs to be, um, but yeah, whatever. I had free time, I guess. So uh, this is the one that's lit up right now. Uh, basically, it just takes the binary numbers that come in, and the way it's programmed, it only accepts certain numbers to be lit up using inverters so like since this is the number that it wants right now which was 8 then it only has an inverter here so then whenever 8 is going through here then all of these are pushed out so no other number will they all be pushed out at least one will be in like down here this one's in that's yeah and the rest of them are out but then that keeps it from making contact and sending a signal through so then, yeah just one of those interesting little things now then all that goes through uh, let me see if I can get out of here now now all of that goes through to here now based on whichever one is lit up which you can see this here is the only one that's unlit because there's an inverter and so whenever it is unlit then it lights up the, the torches along there and tells which ones to uh, send to the display screen. So each one of these separate lines is a separate number. Which, like I said, there's probably a better way to do it, but oh well. So here's my first display screen that I just made as a practice to see if I could actually do it. And then it just runs the lines around to there. I know, right? Pretty simple. Okay, so now just to show you how the like, filled station or overfill feature works, you can see that I have 14 in there, which is represented by the binary, and since it can hold 16 before it tells it to stop, then here's one more to fill up, and then it'll go over to the fifth bit, and once that one's lit up, then that'll be 16, and it will tell it to stop filling it. So, if I go ahead and add five carts here, then you can see all of them will be sent out and there's not much space left up there 
So there's one. And so then I'll go up to 15. Uh, then that should be the last one. You see the track now switched because now there are 16 in there. Uh, one thing that why you probably saw the delay on the screen was because uh, the track switch is controlled by binary instead of by the screen, so it's a little bit faster than the screen. But yeah, now any extra will just go through and instead of going uh, to the station. And as you can see, the station is full. So but then now, if you subtract a cart out, then once it realizes that it's out, then it switches back. Um, I also added in a reset switch sort of thing, just because, well, trying to subtract each individual one, uh, as you can see, whenever I hit the subtract button, then now the buttons, they don't work, because it cuts off the power to them while the computer is doing some kind of subtraction or addition, just so that it doesn't accidentally rewrite something and come up with something really weird. But uh, here, if I turn off auto filling, then now to reset the station, it's got an automated system that it resets them relatively quickly. And the only thing is, it doesn't do the subtraction or anything for it. So it will go ahead and take all of them out, but it still thinks that there's 14 in it. So you have to reset the computer by hand, which isn't hard just because you click a button. Uh, in fact, I can do that now while it's resetting the carts, which resets that to zero, and then now it's zero. And that's empty. So there you go. Um, not the simplest approach, but it definitely works. Um, next, what I'm working on is making a system that instead of building one of these at each of the stations, I might just have one central one that will store the like each separate number for each separate station in one. The only problem with that will be that it'll probably be kind of slow. But since I'm usually the only one traveling around in the world, then well, it wouldn't really matter. But yeah, just just a thought.